Okay, hey folks, Mark Locklear here. Uh, today's screencast is on Chapter 8, Inheritance, and so hopefully you're starting to warm up to the, the ideas of object-oriented pro programming. We've sort of went in-depth with that in Chapter 7. Um, ch chapter 7 was a tough chapter, so I appreciate everyone's hard work there, and hopefully that's going to uh, lay, lay the foundation for a lot of other concepts that we, we talk about as we move forward. Uh, with the class. We're about at the half halfway point, so sort of pat yourself on the back and maybe coming up on July 4th here, so uh, let's let's knock out uh, Chapter 8 and then uh, have a, a safe and productive July 4th and then come back and wrap things up for the summer. So inheritance. So inheritance is one of these uh, sort of axioms in object-oriented programming, all true object-oriented um, programming languages have some form of inheritance and essentially the idea is we've talked about classes that represent world, real world objects and inheritance allows us to again in this idea of trying to model the real world allows us to inherit inherit code or inherit attributes from other classes into uh, into multiple classes. And so what, I'm, what we're going to do today is I'm going to create a, a simple application and we'll sort of, uh, uh, we'll create a handful of classes that, um, that will hope, hopefully um, give us an idea of what inheritance is all about. So th the, the ideas that we want to model here is one of animals. Okay, so let's just take a second and think about animals in the real world. Let's think about maybe someone maybe from a zoo, uh, a zoo's per perspective or someone who's working in biology, their perspective and this idea of if we're trying to categorize animals, how would we, we do that? Well, we know that animals can be mammals and mammals have certain attributes and then if we get more specific we might talk about a dog and a dog has certain attributes. So if we had to sort of model this in the real world and think about from from the standpoint of you were trying to build a system that was there to ca categorize animals. Well you can have animals can be warm blood. You know if you start to think about the different ways to put animals in categories they can be warm blooded, they can be cold blooded, they can have fur, they can have smooth skin, um, they can be, they can live in the water, they can live on, on the earth. So there's all different ways and I'm not a biologist so I don't know all of the nuances of species and things like that but those are the kind of things you're going to want to talk talk about and those are the kind of things you're going to want to think about when you're um, uh, if you were creating a system like this so for starters let, let's start from the most uh, sort of abstract and work our way down to the more specific so I've created a new job application I'm not going to do anything in the main program yet. In fact, I'm not going to touch it until I've built out all of my classes. Then we'll go back to the main program and actually instantiate some objects and um, actually do do some work to, so we can run the application. So if we're thinking about uh, this idea of animals and trying to c categorize them and create classes that would be associated with them, uh, one place we might start is um, we might start with a class called mammal. So, well, let's start with let's start with uh, let's start with the class called animal. That might be the most general. And again, I'm not a I'm not a biologist, so I, I don't know exactly. That, and, and again, this is where as a software developer, lots of times, if I were to be writing an application like this, I would be working very closely with a biologist or someone in the sciences who really knows that domain area very very well and as a software developer that's often a challenge because as a developer you understand the technology and the, the the coding aspect of what you're trying to do and then someone else understands their specific do domain area so I'm going to go in and create a new class here so I'm going to do a new Java class I'm going to call this one animal and so I've got some code I'm going to paste in, and we'll just walk through this. And I'll I'll include this code in um, I'll include this code in the screen in the notes in the screencast. So I need to remove this. 
man, in fact, yeah, that should be okay. So what have we got here? So we've got a class called animal. Notice I've set some private variables, some class level variables here. Um, species, warm blooded, and then notice I'm also doing a count here too. An account might might be used. Um, account might be used to um, keep track of the number of instances of an object that are instantiated. And we'll we'll come back to that later. Um, another thing we want to do in the, the book talks about is the abstract keyword. I'm going to make animal abstract and I just do that by coming up here and adding abstract to it. So what does that do for us? Well what that does is that that says an abstract class in Java is one that cannot be instantiated and in fact let's see that in action. If I sort of go back if I go back to my Java pro program and I instantiate a new object here. So let's do, let's say I did animal A equals new animal. Okay, so notice that's valid code, right? I don't see any error here. But now if I immediately go to animal and I make this abstract, Notice what happens here. Notice I get the red squiggly line, and then if I hover over the, this, notice the error message I get. It says animal is abstract. It cannot be instantiated. So all that means is when we use the abstract key keyword, that means a class cannot be instantiated. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, you might want to have sort of a base level class that in, in this case has things like species, warm-blooded, set warm-blooded, and that, that class is only there to be inherited by other classes. You're, you're not going to create an animal class without we're going to create a mammal and then a dog class here. Um, you would never want someone, in this case if I made animal abstract, you never want someone to create a new animal object. You would only want them to create a mammal or a dog op object. So that would be uh, that, that would be a way that you would use uh, the abstract key, keyword. So I'm going to go ahead and comment this out. Uh, okay, so that's our animal class. So now what's sort of the next level down? If we, again, thinking more abstract and getting more specific, maybe maybe the next level we would think of is a mammal. And so I'm going to create a new mammal class. And this mammal class is going to inherit from, um, is going to inherit from animal. So I'm going to call this one mammal. And then I've got a few things here. I want to paste in for the mammal class. So I'm going to put that in. And uh, I think I need this variable. Well, let's extend. So we said we wanted our mammal class to inherit from the animal class. So the way we do that is with the extends key keyword. So I'm going to do public class mammal and then I'm going to say extends animal. Okay. And notice a cool thing kind of happened there. Notice how I had this error message on count. So if I go back and I originally had this. Notice this count uh, I have a red line in fact because that's an unrecognized variable and then Notice when I extend animal, notice that that count becomes a valid variable. And the reason that is is because I set this count variable here, uh, protected static int count. And so that's just kind of a cool way. And that's kind of a saying check lets you know that you, you are, you're successfully inheriting from the animal class. So again, if we were thinking of this as a hierarchy, animal would be at the top. And then you could... Uh, imagine uh, below that would be mammal and so what this means is mammal is also gets things like species and warm-blooded from animal those are ver variables that are now going to be available to the mammal uh, to any mammal objects we create and in fact if we go do that so let's do mammal m 
equals new mammal. And then let's see. So for instance, if we do M dot, we get uh, we can set things like um, skin type. Uh, we also got species, warm blooded. And let's make sure so even though, for instance, warm blooded and species were not a part of the animal or are not part of the mammal class, they're part of the animal class. So that's what makes them available here when we do when we look at a list of methods that are available to a skin type uh, species warm blooded those are being inherited from the animal class okay okay so let's do let's add one more class in so let's again moving from the more the abstract to the more specific now let's say we want to create a dog uh, object or we want to describe a, a dog. Uh, we would do that uh, by creating a dog class. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go dog, finish, and then we will put some code in for our dog here. Let's, uh, let's see, class dog, okay. Okay, um, so now we want to make sure we extend. Um, so we're going to, dog is going to inherit from mammal. So again, imagine a, a, a hierarchy here where we're going, um, so that extends, a, a hierarchy where we're going from animal to mammal to dog. And because dog inherits from mammal, it not only inherits uh, variables and methods that are associated with the mammal class, dog is going to also inherit from animal because mammal inherits from animal. So again, think of this, uh, a good way to think of this is a hierarchy going from animal down to mammal down to dog. Okay. Um, now we could have also, we could extend the dog, we could have dog inherit from the animal class rather than the mammal class if we want wanted to but it, uh, another advantage generally to inheritance is one of when we look at uh, there, there's this concept of dry DRY and that stands for do not repeat yourself and so inheritance inheritance helps us out here because again if we didn't have inheritance for each of these things uh, for both you know a, a, a mammal a mammal could have a breed as, as well as a dog or a, a, both mammal and dog could have a species variable associated with it and if we didn't have inheritance we'd have to create species variables for each one of these and again that that's a scenario where you're going to you're going to be repeating code so by uh, by creating these variables in this abstract class called animal and then having these subsequent subsequent classes inherit from it we're only writing this code one time and not only that, if it changes, I have a single place to go change that. Let's say for whatever reason, uh, in this case, species is a string. Let's say I wanted we wanted to represent that as an int. There was some number code. Well, we'd have a single place to go change that, and we could do it in this abstract class rather than having to go and, and do it in multiple places. Okay, so we've got a handful of uh, we've got a handful of, of classes in, in place here. Let's sort of see them. In action, um, so we're going to go back to the main method, and I'm going to do just actually go in and paste some code in rather than rather than type type it in. So notice I've got a couple of things here. Um, so I've created a dog object by in instantiating it here and then notice I'm using the set methods to set species breed warm-blooded skin type and then I'm gonna call this two string method um, the the book spends a fair amount of time talking about this two string method and this idea of overriding methods um, again 
from an object-oriented standpoint, all, all objects are going to have this two-string method available to them. But notice, uh, for instance, in the dog class, and I think maybe, yeah, we don't do it in the mammal class, but for the dog class, by creating our own two-string method, we're overriding the uh, Java's two-string method. So again, that, this, this concept of overriding methods is, is, is very much steeped in object-oriented pro programming from a standpoint of um, sort of by default in Java you get a two-string method but we can create our own two-string method that's going to override that so when we call two two-string in this case uh, we're, on, we're only going to print or we're only, go, only going to return breed and in fact let's see if I run this let's see what we get so notice we get breed golden retriever here and that, that was simply what what that was what we set uh, inside this method here and we could also call warm-blooded and, 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 and fur and then notice again because we've inherited from the animal and the mammal class we could also call um, species and mammal and some of these other methods that are available to us. Okay I think that's all I'm going to do for inheritance. Um, again um, inheritance is one of those good concepts to sort of warm up to. It's it's You pretty much see it in, in every in, in in most in every object oriented programming language that's at, out there it it can be probably more helpful in larger enterprise applications than it can you know smaller at applications but again it's uh it it can be a helpful um uh it, it's 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 a helpful part of object oriented pro programming and um one one that can be uh one that can be used often so if you have any questions uh let me know thanks folks